Oh, and thanks very much for coming, and thanks very much, George and Phoebe, for inviting us. We're really thrilled to be here. It's um, been quite a journey for us over the last 20 years, from humble beginnings um, to presenting at uh, such a wonderful venue like this. So we're quite humbled, and thanks, thanks for inviting us. We thought a great opportunity, actually, for us to um, uh, bring in some sort of elements that um, are actually quite um, close, close to our ways of thinking, especially really around the whole Creative Commons uh, and copy left as opposed to copyright. So um, a few years ago, um, I was very happy to have read a book called uh, Remix by a guy called Lawrence Lessig, and it just really opened up my uh, way of thinking. And uh, you know, instead of protecting everything, uh, we're now sharing with you in these envelopes these um, patterns uh, for the secrets of our business. Um, so people think we're crazy in one sense, but uh, hopefully uh, it also, I think, shows um, how easy it is to start a business. Um, and hopefully it inspires people to get up their asses and do something like we did um, begrudgingly a few years ago. Um, it's a very simple process, uh, what we've done, and, and we're still using the same patterns and the same bag design that we've always done. Um, so in, in these little envelopes, there'll be some very basic instructions. Um, and we thought just through the course of the uh, presentation, uh, we would run through how to actually make a bag, um, uh, which is very, very lo-fi. Lo um, and during that process, we'll be talking about how, uh, you know, how we used to do things, how we do things. And so pl please feel free to jump in and interrupt at any time. Um, Ken and Yanni, uh, my esteemed colleagues, who uh, are going to be making a bag, and we thought, um, why not actually just do one from, from one of my uh, famous coats, <laughs> Salvation Army Couture. Uh, it's actually made in New Zealand, that thing. So uh, the idea is that we're actually going to make something like this out of that. Uh, farewell. <laughs> uh, where are we? Um, as I was saying before, it's really easy to, to make this bag, so um, I would really like you to give it a crack. Um, there, there is a little bit of work involved in scrounging some stuff, and we'll run through that as we, um, as we progress. Um, uh, okay, here we go. Um, this slide shows, I suppose it references our uh, first company car, which is a uh, Honda CT110, posty bike. Um, and we, we're, I suppose, very, um, very resourceful in trying to find materials. Uh, when we first started, um, we, didn't, we had really no idea on what we were doing. So we were using um, initially canvas and PVC, uh, which we found were very, very ineffective um, after a while. They looked great uh, when, they were, when it was brand new. But um, after a while, um, it pretty well died. So um, we still sort of use the same um, uh, the same techniques today. We sort of good scroungers. Um, very early on, we used to go skip shopping for materials. Um, we'd, we'd try and sort of find anything we could. So the reference using this old jacket, I think, it's a, it's a, it's a good one. Um, Nana's curtains were pretty popular, um, offcuts, finding weird stuff. But I think what we're trying to say is, um, you know, going to Spotlight or Lincraft isn't really going to find you the right sort of product. Um, so if you could get a bit resourceful. Um, on the back of the pattern, there's a little pattern at the front, and on the back there's the instructions, which, which hopefully uh, will, exp will make things self-explanatory. Um, scrounging for us is obviously, like I said, a, a very big part of what we did, um, and we still do. So um, that's Jeff, our um, web 
uh, web geek at work, <laughs> stuck in there. He doesn't usually come to work like that, but um, uh, he's, um, yeah, he's a good model. Um, uh, yeah, do you guys have any, uh, have, you got, have you guys got mics? Yeah. yeah. Does this work? This is Yanni. Um, I think the interesting thing about scrounging, I suppose, as opposed to sourcing, is um, often it's a, a lot longer process, but you kind of sort of find things along the way that you wouldn't otherwise. For example, if, you, if you're just trying to source a part, you'll just call a supplier. They'll, you know, you ask for exactly what you want and they'll give it to you, whereas um, a lot of what has sort of happened through the ages of scrounging has been, you know, looking through bins and looking through people's offcuts for things that you wouldn't otherwise find. And I think, um, you know, a lot of the things that made crumpler bags unique back in the day were just from that sort of process. So the yeah. crazy colours and the, the threads, I think there's a, the, the original thread was all offcuts from Rip Curl, was it? Or Yeah, that's right. We've got a whole bunch of fabric there. But we, we used um, sailcloth, canvas, denim, leather, uh, patent vinyl, uh, whatever we could find, really. Um. Yeah, and I think uh, pretty much having, having a really open mind about what the actual end use is as opposed to, you know, uh, so kind of thinking around the problem of, well, we need something that's going to last however many years and it's going to be waterproof. So, like, uh, instead of finding your fabric supplier and giving them that challenge, just, just grab whatever you can and, and give it a crack. Um. Yeah. Thank you. This is the pattern that you guys have in your packs. Um, this is half of it. Um, this is blown up 400%. So you'll see you could make a bag effectively the size of the pattern that you have, or um, you could blow it up as big as you want and sort of really just make the bag how you want to do it. So uh, it's really quite accessible. Hmm. Dave, do you want your coat back? No, that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, testing, obviously, uh, once you've found some material, is obviously quite important. Um, uh, and, I, and I think I was, in, in one way, uh, interested to hear what the guy before was saying, was that you know, having something finished is often better than having something perfect. I think um, we've always taken that same approach, which is um, just get it done, put it out there, see what it's like. Um, it's never... Never actually going to be perfect, but um, at least it'll um, at least it's done and finished, and you're actually getting some income. Um, very early on, um, we used to well, the, the the real background of Crumpler was from being a bike courier. Um, so back in the early '90s, before the internet, um, we had a company called Minuteman, and it was basically a um, a bike messenger company, and that's really how we started. Um, we needed better bags. Uh, there was a guy in Adelaide, Roscoe, from a camping shop there who made us backpacks, and they were crap, basically. Um, they, you know, uh, the zips broke, he was horrible to deal with. Um, uh, they were pretty pricey, and so we thought, this is, this is no good. They were also a backpack, which meant during that role, as a bike courier, you always had to take it completely off to get inside. So actually having a, um, a single-shouldered messenger-style bag, which is nothing revolutionary. I mean, they've been around since uh, year dot. Um, was actually that, that simple development of, for us anyway, of having this single-shouldered bag was absolutely fantastic. Um, it would sort of revolutionized our industry. Um, like we'd heard uh, the fax machine had done to the messenger industry, the wind zip drive, you probably remember that. Um, this is in the days of 16, 32, sort of phone line, dial up. Um, and the internet really wasn't, you know, it was coming along. And I suppose that was always the inspiration for us to do something else. Uh, the messenger business was on its way out. And uh, was sort of uh, what, what made us think about doing something else. So being reasonably entrepreneurial, um, once we started making the bags, uh, people were coming in and saying, hey, make one for me, make one for me. 
they're really nice. Um, yeah, uh, make one for me. So we, we just kept going and started a business. It was pretty easy, actually. <laughs> uh, and it's nice, as I keep referring uh, to, uh, we're still using the same pattern today for the basis for basically everything we do, which we've now given, given to you guys. Um, so yeah, that, that, we were very lucky though that we had 30 or 40 bike couriers running around Melbourne using our products as, you know, they were basically our guinea pigs. Um, so they would come back after a few days work and say, hey, um, you know, th this is no good or actually this, this particular material, this PVC was very, very similar to the very first products that we ever made. And it looks fantastic when it's new, um, but once that's been on the back of a bike courier for three weeks, it takes on its own life. Um, and it cracks and it smells and it, um, it, it, it doesn't really last too well. So uh, we're, we're pretty thrilled back then to actually have the, the testing uh, ability of those guys and the re sort of inbuilt research. Um, uh, and these days, I suppose, we're still um, testing our products, but, you know, ag again, it very, um, in a very simplistic way. Um, Dave, we've got a couple of questions. Is now a good time? Yeah, there's a question. Um, when did you decide it would be a good idea to put a lifetime guarantee on your products? Uh, when did we do that? We've always pretty well backed... I always believe if you make something, uh, you should sort of stand by it. Um, and I think it's something that we've always done, and it's something that we've kept um, as a bit of a motivator, really, for us to keep making really good stuff. Um, so we actually um, still have a full repair facility set up uh, in our um, studio in Russell Street. And it gives us the ability to not only service and repair trusty old bags, but also pick up faults and production issues and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's something we'll stand by early on. Um, also, yeah. it makes us, it keeps the design honest, you know, so when we're designing bags, we can't make them overly complex because we know that we're going to have to fix them and keeping the repair facility, actually our repair guy is sitting right here, um, <laughs> keeping him in the business right there next to the designers means that he can walk over and say, hey, this is wrong, don't do this again, or if you change it this way, it'll improve it going forward. So that's really helpful to sort of be aware of your mistakes and learn from them constantly, so. Um, can I just give you a bit of customer feedback? I, I really appreciate that, because you just fixed one of my bags, so thank you. Great. Thank Ooh. Richard. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's we've good. got uh, one more question over on the right. Yeah, I've got a question a bit about R&D. I mean, effectively, that's what you've been talking about a lot already, about how you started off with early stages and uh, experimenting with different things through just, uh, I don't know, allowing destiny to be waiting for you in a skip. But uh, maybe if we could focus a little bit more on innovation, you want to talk a bit more about how you uh, came up with the idea for the third leg with, uh, with the messenger style bag and some of the other things you've come up with. Yeah. It's a lot more than just you know, pretty colours and um, yeah, true. something that um, Well, I think that that's a very good um, reference, actually. The third leg is one of our, uh, I suppose, um, being very resourceful with the fabric. I mean, fabric's expensive. I mean, back in the day, we were paying $25 a metre for um, Cordura from Bradmill in Yarraville. We had to prepay it. We were wholesaling. We didn't really have any money. Um, and we were using every scrap possible. So the actual pattern, when you look at the, um, the little uh, cut here, um, I mean, just right there, uh, it's a pretty wasted piece of fabric. So we were actually decided to use that and attach it to the side as a little, you know, uh, little uh, additional piece. Um, so, so you know, being very resourceful with the testing and, um, and using as much of the material as you could. Like we had a few products, little phone pouches and uh, the scrot and the NADSAC. Um, 
and they, they again were used from scraps. Um, so and yeah. A lot of the innovation comes from testing in the market. I think, um, you know, as Dave was saying with the courier company, it enabled us to bounce off ideas off them. But also when we develop photography bags or anything, we try to maintain uh, like a real clear dialogue with them. And so when we develop professional photography bags, we mainly work with one photographer and get that bag perfect for them, assuming that it's going to be right for the rest of the market. So. Um, it's really getting deep into their problems and then hopefully that captures a whole lot of problems in the market. Yeah. So there, we did show, there was a little video somewhere, I think. There, there we go. This shows the sort of high level of testing that we do these days. It's, um, give you a bit of an idea. <laughs> That's Ben, our photographer, and our old warehouse in Kensington. There's our company car. Nothing's changed, really. Uh, I mean, th these days, we, we've actually bought this thing, this rain machine that we've got installed now. Um, but, you know, we we're always doing things with um, dragging stuff around, throwing things off, off balconies, trying to rip it apart, that sort of stuff. Um, and we'd certainly encourage you, if you go down the path of uh, making your own bag, um, to do the same. Uh, Kane's famous product, the or testing thing, the wheel of the wheel of doom in the, the factory. So a big washing machine with all sorts of road hazards inside that we bounce a bag around. So yeah. try and break things as much as we can, you know. Um, basically, cutting us is uh, is quite important. Obviously, you've got to cut cut some fabric. Um, uh, these guys have been, uh, what, you've cut the jacket up. How are you, how are you, how are you going? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think we'll make it. Yeah. yeah, thanks very much. Do you want to talk about some cutting techniques? We were or? doing um, uh, speed trials in the office, and we don't know if we're going to actually get this done on time, so <laughs> we'll see. Um, I guess like with, with the, when you cut and sew a bag, you can make a lot of your, like you can sort of experiment with failure a lot during this time. So, um, you know, keeping our sample studio in Melbourne has helped us enormously because we can make and fail and test and fail again and, um, and not be afraid to because we know that we don't have to wait three weeks to get another sample. So having, you know, industrial machines and having the ability to do this there um, helps us move quickly through that R&D and innovation process. So if, if people are going to do this at home, just remember you can unpick it. So it's not a big deal. Like if you totally ruin it and it's inside out or if it's totally a mess, it's, it's not a problem. I think that's the nicest thing about cut and sew products is uh, it's sort of such an easy entry level for anybody who wants to start making stuff. And uh, yeah, just give it a go, really. I, I've never, I never knew how to sew, really, before uh, I came here. I still don't, but. You're nailing it there. So I think we're, we're pretty well um, almost finished. Um, how are you going there, Yanni? Yeah, OK. <laughs> Are there any so, further questions from the audience at all? Um, if, if you need more information, we've set up a website called Crumpler Kitchen. Um, and a lot of the information's here, along with some additional bits and pieces. 
Um, so we'd encourage you to have a, have a go. It's really, really easy. And I think what we're trying to explain here is that um, anyone can start a bag company. Uh, it's, there's nothing really to it. Um, um, where anyone that does feel like making the bag, uh, we're putting on a few beers at our studio on March the 4th. And we'd strongly encourage you to come along with your finished product and um, show, us how you, show us what you've done and we'll have a bit of fun. So I think that's really about it from us. Dave, when we were talking last week, you were telling me about some interesting initiatives that people might not be aware of, such as the library bags. I wonder if you might want to talk a little bit about that, because that was quite an interesting yeah, that's, initiative. Um, we've had, uh, I suppose, um, some really good marketing things over the years with um, providing products. And this particular one we're very proud of. We've been um, asked to provide uh, it's our second year, um, a library bag for every prep starting school on their first day. So we made 65,000 um, small backpacks, uh, which went out to every, every prep starting school, filled with books and um, stickers and stuff like that. So um, um, the, the bags for the Olympic team we're pretty proud of as well. The, um, uh, all Olympians going to Rio in 2016 will have, or this year, will have a um, have one of our luggage pieces that we're designing specifically for the Australian Olympic team. So we're, yeah, we're pretty happy. We've come a long way, actually, from uh, humble beginnings. So uh, thanks for having us. Cheers. <laughs> We're nearly there. We're just putting the all-important branding onto the bag. What do we need? The badge is almost done. The okay, badge we're is almost, almost done. done. Well, one second. <laughs> More questions? <laughs> and you can hand sew this too with the pattern. It doesn't need. Uh, you don't need all this equipment. So don't be off put by um, you know all this gear that you need. Is there any materials maybe people should steer away from when they're making their own bag? Stuff that, in your experience, is just a disaster. Try, if, with this bag in particular, heavier weight materials are good. So if you've got an old couch, you can chop that up. <laughs> Curtains are good. Curtains, yeah. um, you know, lightweight jackets like this are for the expert level only, by the looks of it. <laughs> All right, we're putting the finishing touches on here. Yeah. And done. voila, I think we have a bag. This can be optioned for charity. <laughs> there it is. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> Fantastic. Um. <laughs> So much for my jacket. <laughs> <laughs>